When I first started fish keeping, I thought filtration was simple. You buy a filter, you plug it in, and you're done. I figured as long as the water looked clear, my fish were fine. But man, I was wrong. Nobody told me that what's inside the filter actually matters more than the filter itself. Nobody told me that cleaning it the wrong way could crash your entire tank in one afternoon. I learned that the hard way, that filters don't really clean water. They just help nature do its thing. They move water, they give bacteria a home, and they keep waste from building up faster than your fish can handle it. The truth is, filtration just isn't about equipment. It's about understanding balance. And if you don't get that balance right, even the most expensive filters won't save your tank. So in this video, I'm gonna break down everything I wish somebody told me back then when I bought my first filter the mistakes, and the little things that nobody talks about that make all the difference. All right, so I just wanted to answer some questions, just some general questions about filtration. And the first one is, do I even need a filter? Well, that all depends on your tank setup. There's plenty of filterless setups. If you have a heavily planted tank, the plants actually do a lot of the filtration. Your substrate might be dirty, but that's kind of like that's kind of like the whole point is your fish waste will go into the substrate. It'll get down into the substrate. It'll feed the plants, the plants grow, and that's just like a natural ecosystem. Now, there are some fish where you can't have plants. Like if you have African cichlids, they don't do well with plants. There's a few plants that they can do, like maybe some java fern, anubias, and hornwort works but you're gonna have to use filtration just because they're bigger fish. They have a, a larger bio load. Like one African cichlid could equal maybe 20 small fish. Like that's the, that's the difference there. So if you have like small fish and you have a heavily planted tank, no, you don't need a filter. But if you don't, you're gonna need a filter. And does that make you not have to do water changes as often? Not really. The filter handles waste between your water changes. It doesn't take out the nitrate in your tank. You have to actually do a water change in order to take out the nitrate in your tank. So next question is like, what does a filter actually do? Well, it doesn't clean the water like a vacuum. It just moves water through sponges and media. So bacteria can process fish waste. And in there you have your mechanical filtration, like your sponges, maybe some filter floss. It usually goes like a very coarse sponge and then it goes into finer mesh, like maybe like filter floss. And then it goes into your biological media, which that is like a very porous media and that holds your good beneficial bacteria that will take the ammonia and make that into nitrite and then convert that nitrite into nitrate. And so if you have a bigger filter, you have more sponges and so you have more mechanical and you have more biological filtration. So that's how that works. So can I just rinse my filter pads under the sink? Well, this is kind of debated. What you should do is take some old tank water and, you, and put that into a bucket or however you wanna do it and then just squeeze out your sponges in that old tank water. And the reason why you do that is because tap water contains chlorine and chloramines, and that will kill your beneficial bacteria. Now, if you just give it a quick rinse on your sponge, this is like debated. It doesn't really matter that much, but you're, you're not gonna wanna run your biological media under tap water for any extended period of time or ever really, because that's where all your beneficial bacteria lives and you don't want to destroy your beneficial bacteria because you're kind of resetting your tank and then you're gonna get ammonia spikes and then your fish are gonna get all stressed out and then if the ammonia gets too high before you can get it down, your fish are gonna die. And here's one thing that I do sometimes is I will take tap water, but I'll condition the water first. So I'll remove the chloramines and the chlorine from it and then I'll use that to wash. Just in case I don't wanna take tank water for for whatever reason, you can do that. That's pretty simple as well. And then how often should I clean my filter? Well, this really depends on your setup. Like you could have a setup where you don't clean your filter 
for six months. Or maybe you have a smaller filter and you have a, a heavier bio load and maybe it's like a backup filter, but it, it collects a lot of waste. And you notice that, you know, over a period of a few weeks, maybe your the flow from that filter has gone down. Maybe it's, it's just not big enough to handle the bio load of your aquarium. So it really all depends. Now, me personally, I had an FX4 and I still do, but I had it on a 48 gallon tank and I had nine fish in there. I had like three juveniles and then the rest were probably like between three and and four inches and I was using that as a grow out tank and after one month I cleaned my FX4 and then I really didn't need to clean it but after one month I just wanted to see like how much is actually in there I wanted to see how dirty it got in one month and what I realized is it really wasn't dirty at all so now I'm gonna go three months so in three months I'm gonna check it again and see what it looks like and then I think three months is probably gonna be the right amount but if it's not and if it's still fairly clean, you know, I might go four or five months or even up to six months. It just all depends. But as a rule of thumb, I think you would just want to check your filter maybe the first month or two months in just to see where you're at. And then you can gauge it for the next time. So do I replace all of my filter media at once? Well, you don't want to replace your biological media. If you wanted to switch from like one to another, then you should probably only switch like maybe 15% or 20% at a time and, and do that over a period of like a month or every time that you change your filter, maybe it's a few months. You want to give everything time there. You don't want to replace like all your sponges at once either. Now you can replace if you have like some thicker sponges and then you have some filter floss and then if you just change out the filter floss every single time that's what I do. I just change out my filter floss but the sponges like the thicker coarse sponges I'll use those until they are looking like they're breaking down. And so you just want to be cautious and not change your filter because that's what hosts all your beneficial bacteria. You don't want to disturb that. So what happens if I forget to plug my filter back in? So bacteria does die fast without oxygen. A few hours off can actually crash your tank. So you just want to make sure that that is always running. Now, you're, you're probably on, on the safe side if you forget maybe just in a few hours, but if you turn it off and it's just sitting there overnight, yeah, I don't know. You, you just want to, you want to make sure that you monitor the ammonia and the nitrate in your tank for the following days to make sure you don't get any spikes. You're probably going to be fine. Just monitor it to make sure. And if it does spike, you're gonna have to do a water change right away. So how big of a filter do I actually need? So you always wanna size up. So if you have a 55 gallon tank, I would get one rated for like 75 or 100 gallons. The, the nice thing about the Fluvo filters, and this goes for both the FX series and the Fluval 107 through the 407 is you can dial back the flow. So you could have a 407. I have a, I actually have a 407 on a 20 gallon tank and I just have the flow turned down. Now, is that overkill? Absolutely. That, I mean, the 407 is, uh, is a very big filter. I could probably, I could use like a 107 for that easily and it would do the job just fine. And you can even turn down the flow on the 107. I actually have a 107 on my 29 gallon tank with like some ember tetras and neon tetras. So do sponge filters actually work? Well, they do work and here's the reason why they work. They're great for biological filtration because they have a very big surface area and they have a lot of pores. Now, it's a great way to colonize beneficial bacteria. Now, is it going to clean all your substrate? No. It's definitely not. There will be some debris that catches on the outside of the sponge filter and you can kind of wipe that off every once in a while, but it's not really designed for that. It's more designed to be a biological filter more than like mechanical filtration. So can I use two filters in one tank? Absolutely you can. And I, I do this in most tanks and I, I especially do it in tanks that I just start because I will see the tank. So I'll usually when I have a tank, I'll have two filters on there and I'll have biological media in both filters. Or maybe I just have like a canister filter and I have a sponge filter. 
So if I ever get a new tank, instead of cycling that and going through a, like a few week process, I'll just drop in a sponge filter from an existing tank and put it in my new tank. And then I'll run a new, say canister filter or hang on back filter on that tank along with the new sponge filter. And that kind of like just transfers all of the bacteria, the beneficial bacteria from the sponge filter to everything else in the tank, including the new filter that has biological media in it. So that's kind of like a little hack that you can do. And I would definitely recommend doing it um, if you have a tank and if you're ever thinking about getting a new tank. That's one thing about fish keeping is once you have one tank, you always want more tanks. So what's the best way to clean a canister filter? Well, it's it's pretty straightforward. I mean, depending on your canister filter, you, you usually just wanna shut off the valves and then to make sure that there's no flow coming from the inlet and outlet to your filter. Then you can take that off. It might dribble a little bit of water. Then you take the top off of your filter and then you can go through and just take out your sponges and just kind of squeeze them out in dirty tank water. And you can kind of shake off your biological media a little bit if it's, if it's filled with gunk and just overall clean it and then fill it back up with water and then make sure that you condition the water that you're filling it back up with. Like some people will put in just tap water and then they'll put in some um, Seachem Prime or whatever API product that, that conditions the water. Or you can do it beforehand and then put it into the filter. That's what I prefer to do. I don't like pouring any tap water like on my filter with the biological media in there. I prefer to could do that outside the filter and then just dump it in all at once once it's already conditioned. I just like that extra safeguard there. So can I over filter my tank? Well, te technically no, but the flow of over filtering your tank, if you don't have the flow like an adjustable flow on your filter, it could be too much for certain fish. Like if you have small fish and you're and they're blown around all over the place, they're just gonna get stressed out. So there's no no reason to do that. Um, so why is my water cloudy even with the filter? I mean, that could be a few different things, but it's typically like a bacterial bloom and it's it's very normal for new setups and you just kind of let that go. And in a few weeks, you'll notice that that'll go down. Now, I mean, there could be other things. Maybe you have something in the water, like a piece of wood or something like that or you could have had like a lot of debris in your filter and then when you change it there's still like debris blowing around for whatever reason usually that just clears up or maybe you maybe the substrate was like kind of disturbed and that's kind of clouding the water for whatever reason if that's the case then i usually use a water clarifier and i'll just dose the tank with a water clarifier and then it kind of sorts itself out within like a few hours all right so hopefully that answered a lot of your questions now for me personally i like using filters and i like using canister filters and hang on back filters and sponge filters um, even in a smaller setup, like a five gallon tank, I have a couple of five gallon cubes that I've had throughout the years. And I like ha even having like a very small filter that you can get on Amazon. I did put some links in below in the description. Um, these are great for like, if you have a bed of fish and you just want some filtration, it just keeps the water clear. I think, I think it keeps it a lot clearer than just a sponge filter. Now, I do love sponge filters. They're so, they're very easy to use and they do give a little bit of surface agitation too with the bubbles that come up from the sponge filter. They're great for like biological um, filtration, not so great on mechanical filtration just because, I mean, it uses an air hose to power it. I mean, it does bring water into the sponge, but what it doesn't do is it doesn't really clean anything. You still have to gravel vac or have something to clean up your substrate. That's why I prefer using a canister filter because the power that a canister filter has from the outlet is enough to really create some movement in the water. Um, it's basically as much as if you're using a wave maker, depending on how you point it. Now, a lot of times when you use a canister filter, 
you want to make sure that you get some surface agitation. So a lot of times I'll, I'll point it like upwards or if I have wave makers, I'll use a wave maker and I'll point that towards the top of the tank just to create some surface agitation. And if you don't want to do either one of those, you can always have a bubbler and you can create surface agitation with that. But the bigger the fish you have, the more surface agitation you need because they need more oxygen. So hopefully you found this information really useful and we'll see you in the next video.